Hello, I'm Silent Death, and welcome to the fifth episode of the Comprehensive Ferrum Aerospace Research Tutorial. Today, we will be covering the scariest thing in Ferrum Aerospace Research. The Stability Derivative Page. First off, take a deep breath and relax. This page may look scary, but that's more due to the amount of information than any incomprehensibility. Broken down, everything is fairly easy to understand, and you will quickly find yourself wondering what you found so scary. First, let's talk about what all these letters mean. X, Y, and Z are acceleration, i.e. forces, in the three directions. Things such as a lift and drag. U, V, and W are linear velocities in the X, Y, and Z directions. Basically, your speed. P, Q, and R are angular velocities. Roll, pitch, and yaw rates. L, M, and N are your momentum. About the X, Y, and Z axes. So L is your roll momentum. M is your pitch momentum, and N is your yaw momentum. Beta is a little bit more difficult to understand. If your plane is moving in the U direction, that is your speed in the U direction, but your plane is pointing off the U direction, the angle between where your plane is pointing and the direction the plane is going is the angle beta. You can think of it as your yaw angle of attack. Now let's discuss some of the actual derivative values. We'll start with something easy. MQ, LP, and NR are all basically the same thing about different axes. We'll talk about roll for instance. LP. What this means, having this number negative, means that if you're rolling, you will slow down. If this number is positive, if you are rolling, you will start rolling faster and faster and faster until either your plane rips itself apart or you crash. NR is the same thing about the yaw direction. And MQ is the same thing about the pitch direction. Another easy thing to understand is a ZW. A Z is basically a negative lift. So, ZW is how much your lift increases as you start going down faster and faster. Likewise, ZU is how much your lift increases as you start going forward faster and faster. XU is basically a just a drag. So, as you go faster and faster, the force pushing it back increases. If that is the wrong sign, then you have done something very, very wrong and the game is probably broken. XW is how much your forward force, forward acceleration, increases as you start going downward faster and faster. If this was the wrong sign, Basically, that would mean as you're going downward, your plane will start going backwards. You do not want that to happen. You want to be going forward if you're going downward. 
YR is how fast you start going sideways when you yaw to the side. Essentially, how much yaw authority you have. LR is the tiny amount of roll that is induced by yawing. M delta E, I believe that's a lowercase delta anyway, is how much pitch authority you have. You may have problems with this number going negative at very high speeds. If you're suffering from mock tuck, and if that is a problem, adding a horizontal stabilizer with some control surfaces would help there. Canards can also help. Also, you can increase the size of your pitch control surfaces. X delta E is basically the amount of drag your pitch surfaces induce. You want that to be a very small number. And this is how much you actually go up due to pitching. MW is a very important one. And it basically tells you if your plane is going to pitch up or pitch down. As we discussed when placing the center of lift, you want your center of lift behind the center of mass. If it is in front of the center of mass, this value will be positive and your plane will start doing backflips. This can also happen if, for instance, we pumped all of the fuel out of the wrong tank and caused our center of mass to move too far backwards. So basically, if this value is wrong, you need to move your center of lift further back. YP is how fast Rolling will make you turn. NP is the tiny amount of yaw that rolling will induce. These three are also important values that are a common headache to people designing planes for flying at high altitudes. YB and NB are very much related. Remember what the beta angle is. If your plane is going in that direction, but you are facing this direction, this angle here is a beta. And if your plane is going this direction, you are flying in, you're pointing in this direction. Your plane is going to have a lift in this direction. This value is the amount of lift in this direction. NB, on the other hand, is how much your vertical surfaces are going to make your plane want to point back in the direction you are going. For instance, to uh, change in B, if it is negative, one way it could be negative is if your vertical surfaces were in the wrong spot. This way, our thing wants to go away from the velocity heading. And that basically means we have too much vertical or drag in front of our center of mass. So as we move this back, this will start going down. And increasing. LB is your roll stability during side slip. 
If this value is wrong, it means you need to move your center of lift higher, as we discussed in the episode where we covered the center of lift. You can do that two ways, angling your wings up, or placing your wings higher up on the fuselage. Both of those increase LB. L beta, I mean. LR is another value that can be wrong due to not having your center of lift high enough. Some other very important values on this page are your wing area. You can, for instance, look at real life examples of aircraft with a similar mass and see what their wing area is. Though, of course, you'll want ones that can go pretty fast. U0 is the velocity. So basically it converts the Mach number into meters per second can be useful if you haven't memorized what all the Mach numbers are on various planets. Your CL and CD are your drag and lift coefficients. CD being drag and CL being a lift. AOA. This is the angle of attack, how much pitched up you must be to maintain level flight. Very, very, very important. Now, to uh, use this page, basically there are a few things you're going to want to check out. This is basically takeoff and landing speeds. Zero altitude. Mach number of a 0.35, you can see that's 120 meters per second. Mach 5, or Mach 0.5, I should say, is kind of your just taking off thing. Another advice you should check. From 0.5 to 0.7 is the first little bit of your climb. So, up to 10 to 15 kilometers. Maybe 5 kilometers at 0.5. And then 10 kilometers at 0.7. Something like that, depending on your particular aircraft. Then, as you start getting into the thinner atmosphere at 20-ish kilometers, say 18 Let's start with 15. 15, Mach 1. Let's see how stable we are. You may have to go faster at 15 kilometers. You need to know exactly how fast you need to go to be stable. So frequently, my planes will have to do Mach 1.5 at 15 kilometers if they're very, very draggy and not particularly well designed, I should say. At 20 kilometers, things start getting a lot harder. You generally have to speed up quite a lot above 20 kilometers. So if we go up to 25 kilometers, we need to go probably Mach 3 just to get stable. So that's a whole Mach number increase in 5 kilometers. Then at 30 kilometers, Still not good enough. We start running into issues with our yaw stability. This is extremely common. And basically that means we need a larger vertical surface back here. Not really an issue for this plane as it's not got enough air intakes to fly at that high. 
but if you were designing something to go into orbit, that would indeed be an issue. And then as you go faster, about 35 kilometers and Mach 5 are thereabouts, is where you're going to be switching over towards rockets. Somewhere between Mach 5 and Mach 5.5. Also, you need to be sure to run these numbers with and without any fuel or potential cargo. So if we were re-entering, let's say 20 kilometers, we're still going pretty fast. We're having a, a bit of lift issues which is not surprising due to the speed we're going but if we slow down we should be okay <laughs> then as we keep going it slower and slower Depending exactly on how draggy your plane is, as you saw in a previous episode, can still be going quite fast at 10 kilometers, like in excess of Mach 3. Really just depends on your plane. So we of course need to be going much slower for this plane. That is because this plane has a relatively high drag. See our drag is actually greater than our lift at this point, which is why this number is wrong are angry red and then down to about landing speed so this plane can in fact land without any fuel and do a re-entry if you had cargo you would have to manually take out the cargo to check that as you're just saying Empty fuel will not be good enough. One thing that is not often mentioned is that it is not just if these numbers are green or red, but it is the relative values between the two numbers. A, a tiny bit of red can be okay, depending on your plane. To check that out, there is this simulation option. However, this is very, very rarely used for a couple of different reasons. One, it does not take into account SAS, RCS, or pilot skill. Generally, that means it's not particularly useful. Most people tend to find out, or tend to prefer to find out of these things by actually flying the plane. Though I suppose if you're playing on hard career mode, where you cannot revert your flights, you may actually wish to do this. But it tells you your initial values here, same as we talked about earlier. So our initial slide flip angle, our initial R, our initial P, then the time step, then our three speeds. All in all, you can use it if you want to, but it's not really something I would recommend. Unless you're for some reason strapped for cash in career mode. But then I would maybe not risk doing a plane you have not tried out before. That is it for this episode. If you have any questions about what was covered in this episode, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer them. In the next episode, we'll be covering the graph and 
flaps and spillers. Like if you like, subscribe if you're not, leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.